Hi, I'm Dr. James Machino. What causes PMS or premenstrual syndrome? Well, as you know, PMS is sort of a cluster of variable symptoms that you know, affect women often seven to 14 days prior to menstruation and usually disappear around the time that the menstrual flow begins. But you know, in some women, they get very painful dysmenorrhea or you know, painful menstrual cramps which can also, you know, make things very debilitating for them for a few days longer. And, uh, you know, it's interesting, about one-third of women report having PMS symptoms, uh, especially women between the ages of 25 and 40 years old. And in about 10% of cases, the symptoms are extremely severe. So, you know, the symptoms, uh, you know, manifest in different ways. There can be, you know, things that affect you emotionally where you feel depressed or nervous or there's irritability, anxiety, and there's also intestinal symptoms that can result, you know, abdominal bloating is very common. But also, you know, weird cravings for sugar or chocolate, as well as, uh, you know, uh, uh, constipation or diarrhea can occur during that, that time of the month. Uh, changes to reproductive tissue, of course, breast swelling, breast tenderness, uterine cramps, and of course, headaches are often worse than or, a feeling of backache or sort of a gnawing back pain and uh, you know swelling of the fingers and the ankles is not uncommon as well so you know any cluster of or constellation of those symptoms can occur what's at the root of this what are the causative factors why does this happen the the, the, the underlying uh, consistent finding in PMS appears to be an imbalance between estrogen and progesterone where your, your, your estrogen to progesterone ratio is just too high. So there's too much estrogen, not enough progesterone about five to 10 days prior to menstruation. How does this happen? Well, um, from, from a, a faulty dietary standpoint, you can get your body to produce too much estrogen. At the same time, if your liver is not detoxifying the old estrogens fast enough, then that will also elevate your estrogen level. So you can have too much estrogen by dietary factors that increase estrogen levels or by slowing down the estrogen detoxification, which can also be managed through diet to a certain degree. Another common reason is that sometimes in the ovaries, the, the corpus luteum doesn't secrete enough progesterone. So that's going to give you uh, this imbalance as well. So it is this imbalance, though, in estrogen to progesterone that we see is at the heart of the problem because that imbalance leads to a change in endorphin levels in the brain. So when your endorphin levels drop, you, know, you get mood swings, depression, anxiety sets, and it, it affects how you feel. And that imbalance also creates uh, excess prolactin to be secreted, which causes sort of fibrocystic breast disease, hyperproliferative activity in the breast, breast tenderness and swelling can result from that. And the elevated estrogen also increases the release of aldosterone, which holds water and salt in the body. So those symptoms of swelling and bloating and water retention are, are due to that aldosterone effect, we think. So, you know, the, when you have these symptoms and they're severe, you seek medical help. And medical doctors are sort of hamstrung. They're not really sure what to do. So, you know, women often, sometimes have very severe symptoms, so they'll prescribe oral contraceptive drugs or the birth control pill which sort of overrides all of your natural hormonal secretions and takes control. But I don't think this is actually the best answer. The best answer is to try to just bring the estrogen to progesterone ratios back into balance, which I'm going to talk to you about. Sometimes doctors will prescribe other hormones that will sort of you know, block the ovulatory cycle. Or if you know, you're feeling depressed, they'll give you an antidepressant. If there's a lot of anxiety, they'll give you an anti-anxiety drug. If there's a lot of water retention, they'll give you a diuretic drug. If there's a lot of breast tenderness, you get a painkiller. Menstrual cramps, you get a muscle relaxant. So really, that's just chasing the symptoms around the body. It doesn't really get to the cause. The peer-reviewed clinical studies in medical and scientific uh, journals shows very conclusively, and I've seen it in my own patients, that the right diet, lifestyle, and supplementation program can actually bring that estrogen and progesterone balance back where it belongs and help to remedy most of the symptoms of PMS and dysmenorrhea in a high percentage of cases. So a lot of doctors are not trained in the area of natural medicine and nutrition. So what I've done is I put all the information together for you in an ebook that you can download right here for free. It's called uh, The Natural Management of PMS. If you suffer from PMS symptoms, whether to a severe degree or to a modest degree, you should download it right now. 
not only will you see the comprehensive program, but I've included all the scientific references so you know you're getting only solid scientific information. So now this brings me to the other fact, and that is that at machinohealth.com you'll see other re research review papers that I've written. You'll see other videos I've created, footage from my live academic seminars, other resources and downloads that I've created that are all there for free that will help lead a long, healthy, functional life. All my research articles and teaching materials have all the scientific references in them so you know you're getting only sound, scientific, evidence-based information on any health topic that you're looking for. So you really should make machinohealth.com an ongoing, reliable resource of health and wellness information for both you and your family. Thanks so much for watching.